Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another RedGamingTed.com video. I promised I'd be making this a regular series of how to build a PC, and this time we're going to be targeting March, the enthusiast level, or should I say the enthusiast budget level. So you're looking at around $800 or £700, give or take a few pennies. For the most part, the system is going to be very similar to the $600 uh, one or £500 one. The only difference would be primarily the memory and a few other bits and bobs too, such as, say, the graphics card. So, for the CPU, it doesn't really take a genius to figure out what we're going to be using. We're once again going to be going uh, AM, uh, Intel, and we're going to be using the Intel Core i5. That's the 3570K. The K is extremely important because this allows us to overclock. Um, now, you could indeed go the Sandy Bridge route if you prefer, and you might be able to get them at slightly cheaper. Um, I'm assuming you're going to be going new for all of this stuff, but if you do manage to grab stuff off eBay, of course, it will be considerably cheaper still, but I'm assuming most people want to go new, hence this guide. Regardless, generally speaking, Ivy Bridge does run cooler. However, it can, on extreme overclocking, you know, with very high amounts of overclocking, be slightly inferior in terms of clock speed to Sandy. My personal opinion, however, is the Ivy is the later model, therefore you might want to go for that instead. Of course, you'll be wanting the LGA1155 variant of that. It's going to cost you around $230. If you're in the Great Britain, for example, this would cost you around 200 Now, if you do want to save a few pennies, um, and this would be, by the way, including VAT, I'm sorry, in the UK, if you do want to save a few pennies, you could actually go for the 3550 variant, that's the K, um, but it depends on if you want to save a few uh, dollars or pounds. Um, if you're on a fairly tight budget, or you really want to throw in the best graphics card possible, or you need a few other bits of bobs, for example, and you monitor and you're on a fairly strict uh, budget, remember this spec does not include operating systems, it's just the hardware, then you could save you know, a little bit of cash going with the 3550. However, I would highly recommend a CPU cooler for this. Now, this system is built to be extremely overclockable, and of course, overclocking, just in case you're not familiar, just in case you know you aren't, then it's basically the act of running a component faster than it should be. So, for example, if a CPU is, say, 3 gigahertz, you could run it at, say, 3.4, as an example, and therefore running faster than what it should be. However, this, of course, does in turn require more cooling. Now, the retail heatsink and fan is what we went with with the previous build, the $600 one. However, now I'm recommending something a little bit meatier. Now, which one is very, very dependent upon the case you get, um, as well as a few other bits and pieces, including how loud you mind the system being. Uh, for example, the Akasa uh, AKCC 4008 HP01, also known as the Venom Voodoo Cooler, is pretty good in terms of the reviews. I've not personally used it. You can also try out the Rosewell RCX range. They're pretty good as well. But I'm not going to highly recommend one in particular. I suggest you do your own um, Googling around. There's a couple of reasons I mention this, because some of them are notably easier to put in. Others require you to install a backplate and so on. And so it really depends upon your comfort level. So do make sure that you've kind of Googled before. If, you've, if, you, know what you're, you, know, if you know your comfort level, and hey, or you know a friend, for example, that can help you install things if you're not too confident yourself, then go ahead and do, do so. Anyway, uh, moving on and talking about memory now. Now, of course, the more amount of memory that you, sorry, should, should I say the more memory you have, the better. Unfortunately, memory prices have gone up a little bit. They're not, you know, through the roof, but they're not as cheap as they once were. But that doesn't mean that you should settle for anything less than 8 gigabytes on this particular setup. Something like, say, the Corsair Vengeance, 8 gigabyte sticks are pretty nice, and obviously they get pretty nice reviews. You're looking at around £60 for those. You could also go for, say, Crucial Ballistics Tactical. Once again, you're looking at around 53 to 60 for those. Um, it's heavily dependent upon what exactly, you know, 
com you're comfortable with. To be honest with you, most memories going to roughly perform the same. It once again depends on how heavily you're overclocking as well. But I'd recommend just check out a couple of the reviews. As I've mentioned before, those two are pretty nice. Corsair are pretty good. Um, Gale are okay. I personally have heard a few mixed things about Gale. Um, they were okay, and then they kind of went downhill a little bit from what I understand. I've personally not really used them. I personally have stayed with Corsair for the most part, um, and a few other manufacturers as well. So Crucial, of course, are pretty darn good as well. So I personally stick with those two. Anyway, um, what else have we got to get? Uh, yes, hard drive. I'm sticking, I'm staying away from the graphics card for a moment. You'll probably have noticed. Hard drives, hard drives, hard drives. Now, as I mentioned earlier, hard drives, or should I say in the previous video, hard drives are very subjective, and I don't really want to say you should definitely get this particular one, which I know is a bit of a cop out. I would personally recommend if you if you're very tight on budget to go for something like Seagate Barracuda. However, what I'd suggest you do is have a look at your current system. Now, if you happen to have a hard drive that's SATA already and has a decent transfer rate, and especially if it's fairly large, like say 500 gigabytes plus, then you have a small decision to make, and that is should you stick with that drive and throw the money onto something else, maybe even a second drive, if you're running out of space, or should you replace that drive with a faster one, or the other option would be to go with an SSD. Now, I've personally used a few systems versus SSD. I personally don't own one yet. Um, but that's kind of an aside. I'm not going to go into the whole reasons why, but I will be going with one with my new system. In my personal opinion, they're definitely worth getting. Uh, they do make the system a lot snappier. I think that if you're a gamer, then it's wise to get one, um, an SSD. If you're into heavy media and content creation, it's also definitely worth picking up an F SSD. If you're a light gamer or you're not that into gaming, then it might not be so you know so much of a big deal. However, regardless, SSDs now are fairly cheap. Uh, 64s are pretty darn cheap indeed. However, I personally wouldn't go with the 64 for one reason. I think they're a little bit too small and constrictive for my personal taste. Particularly by the time you've installed the operating system, uh, Windows 7 or 8 is kind of bloating. Yes, you can do things to minimize the install and blah, blah, blah. But to be honest with you, I find that by the time you've installed a few applications, especially as I've mentioned before, if you have, say, the the CS6 suite from Adobe and so forth, it, it can get pretty big. My personal recommendation would be go for a 128 gig one. If you can fit it into your budget, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, you can also make a few other sacrifices, such as, say, the optical drives. I'm not going to even bother to mention an optical drive. Anything, say, Samsung or LG or something similar will be fine. Um, to be honest with you, with the optical drives, as long as it kind of does the job, I'd personally recommend SATA, if possible. If you happen to have an IDE one, or PATA if you prefer, I'd recommend nuking it and going with SATA. For no other reason than just it makes the wires a lot easier to route and also it keeps the system a lot cooler in terms of airflow. But that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, some some IDE cables can be actually quite neat. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the rounded ones which have been um, kind of in netting. Uh, a couple of them are available. So it depends. I mean, if you've got a reasonable setup or a decent case, then you might not need to do it. Otherwise, you might as well get a new drive, especially if your one is getting a bit long in the tooth. But I know that a lot of people now are moving away from optical systems. And indeed, there is an increasing argument that says, hey, you don't really need it. I don't really agree with that yet. But whatever. There is just a little bit of noise outside. I'm trying to pause it in between it, but it's uh, it's a bit tricky. I'll try to remove it post-production. Unfortunately, as some of you uh, regular viewers may know, there's a bit of construction uh, work going outside my house. And yes, it is still going on. And it, yes, it is happening at night. And therefore, it makes me want to murder things. But I can't really do much about it. I do try to remove as much as possible post-production, but it's not always possible. Regardless, um, what was I saying? Ah, uh, yes, motherboards. Um, in terms of motherboards, most rec sites that I've uh, looked at for the Ivy Bridge recommend the ASRock uh, Z77, the Pro 3 in particular, gets a pretty darn 
good um, recommendations and indeed I even used the Azrock uh, variant on the previous build as well. You're not going to be looking at massive amounts for this, it's around 90 and considering all the feature set in my opinion it's, I wouldn't exactly go as far as to say a no brainer but it's a pretty nice board for what it actually is and it should easily do. I know some people may not be comfortable so much with ASRock because uh, back in the day, um, especially a couple of generations ago, they were really known as the budget boards. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, by all means, do your own Googling um, on the board. Once again, that's ASRock Z77. Um, if you're not 100% comfortable with it, uh, you can of course go with you know the the familiars such as Asus or MSI or what have you. But from the research I've been doing, it's a pretty nice board indeed. Uh, so that leaves with one area which of course is always going to be controversial and that would of course be the graphics card. Now if you've looked at the $600 or £500 system you'll know that that would of course have been the um, I went with the Sapphire HD 7850. I still have the previous one in my basket and once again there was a choice between the one or two gigabyte variant. The one gigabyte would cost you around £138 while I'd love to be able to recommend you guys get the 7970, I don't think it's going to fit in our budget and unless I'm very much mistaken, it definitely won't fit in our budget. The same thing of course could also be said for most of the GeForce cards as well. For example, in the UK right now we have the GTX 670 2 gigs, which is at around 284 and if we were to go to up to something like the 680 then you're looking at around 380 plus. Um, you've of course got the GeForce uh, 6... Uh, let me start again. The 660 range, the TIs are pretty nice. To be honest with you, however, I'd personally recommend AMD for the budget. Yes, you do miss out on CUDA and PhysX, which can be a bit of a problem uh, if you're a heavy video editor or you really love PhysX. Other than that, um, it's going to be a bit of a tie-up between the 7870, so 7870, or the 7850 series. Personally, what I'd recommend you do is once again do a little bit of shuffling on your budget. Generally speaking, however, you're not going to find an absolute huge difference between, uh, say, the 7950 and the 7, uh, 7870. So you might want to go with the 7870. The 7, 7950 is definitely slightly more expensive but slightly better performing in most titles. Once again, I'd encourage you to do some Googling on the particular games that you play on the resolutions that you game at. Um, I'm assuming most of you guys are going to be wanting to do 1080p with modest levels of AA. If that's the case, I'd recommend um, 7870 to be honest unless you've got the extra bit of cash so anyway um, what else have we got okay case I'm not gonna exactly mention a particular case I know that's a bit of a cop-out to some of you but to be honest I found that most cases are subjective um, pretty much any of them you know that you like the look of and have got a decent review are going to do the trick and to be honest your current case could be okay as well um, I'm good looking at one site right now I don't want to give names as I you know don't want to play favorites or whatever but bit Phoenix Merc beta for example is available in the UK for around 33 pounds once again this is you know, including the VAT. You've also, of course, uh, got other cases uh, such as the Xmatech. I'm assuming that's how you spell that. Uh, Zigmatech, actually, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Asgard. And that would cost you around the same in dollars, around $34 or so. Once again, these prices are rough. And obviously, you know, feel free to do some shopping around to save yourself some pennies if possible. In terms of power supplies, this system's not going to be using, you know, uh, 800 watts or something similar. Uh, manufacturers I personally trust would be Acasa, uh, Antec, Corsair. I personally use those on most people's systems and I've not really had any problems as you guys know. I never recommend you go with a cheap power supply because I have quite literally, by the way, um, had a case where I was um, fixing someone's PC and because they were telling me there was something wrong with it and actually we were about to change some of the components and I turned on the PC 
and massive amounts of sparks came out of the back of the power supply so it's quite fortunate it already bought the parts um, otherwise he would have been pretty screwed but it was quite literally to the case where the system was balked after that it took out i believe the motherboard and a few other bits he was really lucky he managed to salvage the drive but after that i've never ever 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 said to someone you should skimp on the power supply um you can get something similar as the acasa venom that's the 550 watt that's the modular i'd always recommend modular if you can um simply because this allows you to plug in what cables you need now there's two benefits two benefits of that one is neatness as in it looks physically nicer and also that also has an added benefit might i add of not getting you confused after all if you've got like you know five thousand wires coming out the case six months down the line if you need to open it up to actually remember what the hell plugs into what it's a real pain in the ass the second benefit is it's a lot easier to route the cables and cable management as after all a lot of these cables are extremely thick and chunky and so trying to hide them behind motherboard trays and whatever else it's doable don't get me wrong it's not you know impossible but it's a pain in the butt to say the least and so i quite like module modular for that so as i said that's the acasum acasa venom 550 you're looking at around 65 for that you can also go with something like the antec neo uh, that's 520 that should be fine as well um, as i've said the system components we're using aren't incredibly uh, taxing in terms of power ivy bridge for example is fairly power efficient and indeed the graphics card is not going to drain masses amounts of energy either so uh, that should just about do you now once again as i said the 800 is absolute worse so in case you need every one of these components but in my opinion you could probably get it for a little bit cheaper especially if you have say the case or you don't need the let's go with the hard drive and the or let's go with uh, the optical drive then you can probably save some cash unfortunately of course windows is still going to cost you a bit of cash i know what you're going to say what about windows 7 and 8 i'm not even going to touch that one with a barge pole i haven't actually really used windows 8 yet um there are a number of reasons for that mostly i just can't be asked to format I know I can install on another partition and blah 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 but you know what my system's working okay as is and I'm kind of getting ready for the new parts that are going to be released soon. Anyway, hopefully you guys have found this video helpful and not too waffly so take care of yourselves and bye for now.